we're going to talk today about avoiding and handling chargebacks. Not only the avoiding, but how to handle when they do come up. Because they're probably going to come up. And this is this is what you need to understand so that you can teach your merchants how to handle and avoid the chargebacks. Some of these are POS uh, features that will help in avoiding and handling, and others are just good old common sense business practices. But in no way is this legal advice. Our team, are, we're not attorneys and we're not giving you any legal advice or giving your customer any legal advice on this. So let's do some avoiding. Why you avoid chargebacks? Well, first off, it's a double penalty. You're, you're going to have the merchant's going to have to give the refund, and then there may be additional fees, which can be substantial if the merchant decides to really fight this to the bitter end. So it can be very expensive with regard to fighting the chargebacks. So it's just better to avoid them to begin with. In addition to that, frequent chargebacks can label or get that merchant labeled as a high risk. And that then could lead to cancellation. Not only cancellation of the current processing contract and agreement, but you, the merchant could be labeled as a high risk and then be prohibited from getting good rates or not even being able to apply for a credit card um, processing account. So it, it is not something to be trifled with. Chargebacks are serious and should be treated as such. So the resolution process for a chargeback, it's in the favor of the, of the consumer. It is not in the favor of the merchant at all. And, and those fees can be costly. So the best thing to do is just to follow the procedures we're about to talk about so that merchant can avoid as many chargebacks as they possibly can. So first off, you, the merchant needs to be very transparent in their return and how to handle policy. Whatever policy that would be of how to uh, approach management about a problem, how that problem is to be resolved, make sure that the policy is readily available for them to see and understand so that there is no confusion on what the procedure is. Make sure that the customer knows that their first step is not to do a chargeback, that their first step is to somehow contact and work with the restaurant in order to avoid any further penalties. The restaurant has to have very good record keeping. And with the Delo Express, the saving of all the receipts and all the transactions is something that's done just automatically. We do it anyhow. So they'll have good record keeping by having all the sales in the system and they can be easily recalled. So this part of it, we do for them if they're using Express. The restaurant needs to offer excellent customer service, but if there is a problem, jump on it. Don't let it fester. Don't let it sit. If there's an issue, have a manager come over with a plan on how to handle that and just give excellent customer service. That starts with the communications with the customer. Let that customer know how to communicate and provide them with the multiple contact methods. This is easily done on the receipt. We have a lot of lines on the receipt, preamble and post, that allow you at the restaurant to put a lot of contact information there. Phone numbers, names, emails, all the different methods that are available for them to contact the restaurant before they take the step of a chargeback. If you can eliminate the chargebacks or reduce them just by the sheer fact that you have different and better communications methods with that customer when there is an issue. If the customer does not have a contact for the restaurant, they're more likely to do a chargeback because they may not realize there are other or maybe even better alternatives. So another thing you can do is clearly describe the menu items. This is not only for the in-house dining, but I'm thinking more specifically of the online ordering and that you have descriptions. 
you have the menu item, but in our system, you are able to have a really nice and proper description of the item that's going to be put on, put in front of them, whether it's in the, in the restaurant or in the, at the front door. Clearly describe the item, what they're going to receive, so that there's no misunderstanding about what is going to be there. Set clear expectations for uh, delivery of the item. This is back again to online ordering and the Mesa Plus. Set clear expectations of when that food is expected to be delivered. Maybe even send the text to the customer when the, cust when the food is ready, when it's left the restaurant. Continue the communications by setting clear expectations for that, mer for that merchant to be delivering the food to the customer. POS can also help with the EMV transactions in that their dip and tap are just far more secure and they're harder to fight as a chargeback for the consumer. If they have their card present, dipped and, or tapped that card, that is a more secure and also proof that they did receive the item. It's hard to fight that. Another feature that we have that can help prevent a chargeback is a, the AI tip adjust. And they, that is because some customers just don't don't even leave a tip, um, and they don't complete the the, uh, the uh, transaction there, and they leave that tip line open. And sometimes that server will put in what tip they want. AI Tip Adjust will read that ticket and put in the proper amount. It'll make sure the math is correct, and that the customer's intent is then. Uh, met. That way the customer, whatever they intended, uh, actually comes through. And especially something like this where that customer only left a 20 cent tip. Well, our AI tip adjust will read that and will make sure that their intent of only a 20 cent tip was, was completed. POS can also help with we our feature with the promo cards. If there's a bad experience for a customer, the manager may use a promo card that has a free item on it or a free meal for their next return. This helps them get that customer back and lets them give, another, give the restaurant another chance. And the, the feel, felt, found method is a perfect example in that the manager can say, I understand how you feel that the meal did not meet your expectation. Uh, we uh, fortunately we've had other times where that was other customers felt that way and what they found was if they gave us another chance we redeemed ourselves and kept them as a customer promo cards can be good for that it's better than a gift card in that it doesn't cost the restaurant money and that they a gift card you have to put money into the till in order for it to balance promo card not so much it's going to be the cost of the promo card is really literally the cost, food cost of that next item or next meal. Then there's discounts in that we can uh, comp an entire meal with a discount and then have the accountability of who, who authorized that discount or that comp and why. And so the reason codes that go along with that. So it depends on what the restaurant wants to do, but in either case, they have addressed this with the unhappy customer and have probably avoided a chargeback by doing so. So how to handle chargebacks? We're gonna let my co-presenter, Mr. Rodney, jump in here and he's gonna handle the chargebacks. So we'll be going over next um, what happens when a chargeback is issued against the merchant. Now, this is just a general process that can vary depending on the issuing bank. And the issuing banks are the financial institutions such as Bank of America or Capital One, who, who provide the payment card brands to like Visa, MasterCard, American Express to the customers and acquirers um, like Pfizer or Tesis as a familiar example. Uh, more importantly, like Jerry said earlier, we are not providing legal advice, so the steps provided here um, are not to be taken as legal advice. Um, also, we will not get into specifics when it comes to fees, as again, it may, it may vary depending on the issuer and acquirer policies and the merchant agreement that the merchant has with their acquirer. 
right? So if a cardholder does not recognize a transaction, uh, feels the transaction is fraudulent, or the quality of services were not met or received at all, um, they may request a chargeback. Issuing banks allow for the cardholder to file a chargeback for up to 120 days, uh, whereas the minimum time limit legally is 60 days. Um, the cardholder submits um, the chargeback request with their issuing bank. So you'll see the flow here, cardholder to issuing bank. And it starts. this starts the what's called the pre-arbitration process. Then the issuing bank will notify the acquiring bank, who then sends notification to the merchant. Uh, the merchant will be provided documentation on the details of the chargeback. Also, once initiated, the cardholder will be given a temporary credit and funds will be deducted from the merchant account. Now, once the merchant is notified of the chargeback, what are the next steps? All right, here's some things that they need to know before proceeding. Now, these are not necessarily in chronological order, but do need to be considered along the process. They should know the expiration date. The merchant must respond within that, um, with, with the action that they will take by the given deadline provided by the acquirer. Timelines will vary with the acquiring banks. The merchant will need to make a decision and take action prior to this deadline. Otherwise, if they do not respond by the deadline, they lose a dispute by default. And in some cases, the, the merchant may still be subject to additional fees if they fail to respond. Okay. And it is best to know what fees um, that they can or may be incurred. Um, they, they have to know what fees they are subject to if they are to choose to proceed with the pre-arbitration for if they win or if they lose a dispute. Next step is to look into the reason code, basically why the transaction is being challenged. Reason codes do vary per issuer, and based off of the reason code, the merchant will know what data data they will need to be that will need to be collected. For example, if the provided reason code was an author, unauthorized transaction, the merchant would then gather evidence to prove that it was actually a valid transaction. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, the merchant will need to take action within the specified deadline. Um, the first action the merchant can take is to accept liability. They must inform their inquiring bank that they will not dispute the claim and the temporary credit provided to the customer is finalized and the merchant accepts loss. This ends the pre-arbitration process. Fees may still apply, apply depending on the issuer policy and or stipulations in their merchant agreement with their acquiring bank. The other action, the merchant disputes the chargeback in a process called representment. Um, this goes back to knowing the possible fees. Is it worth the fight? It may cost more to dispute the potential fees in, with the potential fees involved. So if the cost benefit is not in favor of the merchant, it may be, may be best to revert to the first action of accepting liability. Ultimately, that is up to the merchant to decide. So once they proceed with the representment, they will have to gather evidence. So if the merchant chooses to dispute the chargeback, although Express can be used as a tool to gather the transactional information, as Jerry pointed out earlier, um, so that, that can be done either through the application or from the back office cloud. They can pull up orders in dispute and the orders in dispute and reprint receipts from the application. From the back office cloud, they can pull up payment journals um, or from the MSP page, they can view how the transaction was recorded, whether the card was dipped, tapped, or swiped, or even if it was hand keyed. It is also best to keep physical records of the actual, rece actual receipts and preferably signed receipts. Um, the merchant should keep record of the itemized receipts so they know what items went into the ticket, as well as providing that to the customer so the customer has a um, record of that for full transparency. Um, customer incidents, which is a feature with Aldelo Express, should also be recorded in case they have the need to recall an incident that can possibly be used as evidence. Then they can file or put together a rebuttal letter. Um, basically, the merchant will provide a complete um, compelling evidence as to the validity of the transaction, and the more information, the better. And then they will submit that um, once it's all gathered. Um, <clears throat> the merchant will submit their claim to their, the acquirer, who then forwards the representment to the uh, issuer. 
Dushing Bank will review all the information and make their ruling in favor of the cardholder or the merchant. And once this is met, um, if they do come to a conclusion, this ends a pre-arbitration. Um, however, in cases where judgment or resolution is not determined through the pre-arbitration process, then the process can move into arbitration. Um, this, this is where the actual card network comes in as a neutral party to review all provided information from both parties and come to a final resolution. Now, <clears throat> merchants may opt out um, of the arbitration process, as in most cases, the merchant is responsible for, for all the chargeback fees, regardless of the outcome. All right, I'll go ahead and hand it back to you, Jerry. Okay. Do we have any questions? Wasn't there anything in the chat that we need to bring up? So is there a time frame that people, you know, have to, to respond to chargebacks? And what is that time frame? Are you referring to the cardholder or the the merchant? For the merchant. For the merchant, it, it, it times can vary. It can be thirty days. It, it's it's specified by the acquirer. I've seen thirty days to forty five days. Um, but whatever the deadline is uh, provided in the in the chargeback letter to the merchant, they must respond by that date. Okay. And when they uh, respond, is there? Do they have to actually respond in writing to the letter, or is there a portal or a phone number they can call to, to deal with those? Um, let's see here. So I actually know the answer to that one. Um, <laughs> both First Data and Thesis have phone numbers that, you, that the merchant can call uh, to get guidance, and they can ask anything from what is a chargeback going to cost, uh, what stage of the process they're in? Can somebody explain the process? They're very good at all of that. They'll also walk them through uh, providing any evidence. And we'll even make recommendations to what evidence may need to be uh, provided for that type of chargeback. Because there may be lots of different types of chargebacks. Um, the chargeback could be anything from customer service to bad products to uh, sometimes just general don't believe they actually went into that business. And so depending on which type of chargeback, the type of evidence is going to be different. They will guide the customer through how to handle that. Um, in First Data's case, they do have a portal that you can go to that would actually walk the customer through. Here's the, the evidence and information. If a customer wants to do that, they can do that without calling the phone numbers. Um, we have worked with both First Data and Tesis to really help them bring down their call times and, and staff those calls much better. So they do actually have uh, really good response times uh, if somebody does have to call or if a merchant has to call to get that information. Uh, I think one of the other questions we have in here is, uh, can the dealer call on the behalf of the merchant and handle that chargeback? So Rodney or Jerry? Jeff, I'm going to let you do this one too. I have I have a good idea, but I'm not sure real confident in my answer. My answer, my unconfident answer would be a third party can call because I do know there's third party services that do this, but I'm not sure if they're licensed or given the power of attorney to do it. Yeah, so most of the time, First Data and Tesis want to deal directly with the merchant to help resolve the problem. Uh, as a dealer, uh, and us as an ISO, if we call in to First Aid Artesis to get some information, they'll give us some vague overview information. They will not be able to talk to us about specifics, and there's some data they just will not be able to provide us. But they will accept if we go, hey, we have all the documentation, everything ready, and uh, want to submit it. The dealer can submit it. We can submit it. Uh, we do prefer that the customer themselves submit it. Um, as oftentimes that, that merchant themselves needs to hear what is exactly the problem. And hearing it from us, oftentimes when the merchant loses a uh, uh, chargeback request, uh, they really want to hear directly from the, the processor what is the reason for that. 
Um, so it's best that the merchant handle it directly with the processor. They can get a lot more information. Uh, it's a lot easier to get it done much, much quicker than it is with an inter intermediary. But First Data and TSIS will allow uh, anybody with that merchant number to really call in and, and work on that issue on that customer's behalf. Uh, just do understand, if you do choose to call First Data or TSIS to handle those issues, uh, there is a liability situation that you need to be aware of. Um, if that customer loses and stuff, it's, you know, customers do sometimes become litigious. Um, they may decide to, that you owe them something because you didn't handle it properly. So it's usually best to let the merchant directly handle it with the ISO or processor. That's all the questions we had here, though, Jerry. I do remember you and I got approached at a trade show by a company that wanted to represent chargebacks for merchants. I just didn't like that concept. I like that. I, I like the idea of the merchant doing it themselves. Yeah, there are you know companies that will try to handle that chargebacks. In most cases, restaurants don't have very many chargebacks. It varies from from merchant to merchant. Um, but in general, you know, most restaurants just don't have a large chargeback risk or a large chargeback uh, group that makes it worthwhile to have somebody manage that for them um, and to go through that process. And even if they do have somebody that's managing that, they're still going to have to go through the process of providing all the evidence to that party. Um, that party's just really working as a middleman to forward that to whoever the processor is. Um, so oftentimes they're paying an additional fee for somebody to just pass that or send it as an email to <laughs> to another party. It's I never saw it as really worthwhile. It's taking the same amount of time for the customer. Um, but there are customers that want that white glove service um, and somebody to really walk them through that. One of the one of the additional things that we can do as a on the merchant side of things is making sure that the uh, description on the statement, the credit card, credit card statement is understandable. That instead of it being ABC Incorporated, maybe it's Joe's Restaurant. So that the person who's an, who's doing the uh, analyzing of the credit card statement can remember Joe's Deli, but won't remember ABC Incorporated. So make sure that that the description on the credit card statement actually is understandable as to who what what business this is. All right, any final statements, Rodney? No, you guys covered it all. Uh, Jeff, anything else? I think we've got it. All right, I'm gonna call this done. This is a uh, something you need to as a dealer and a referral partner. You need to be helping your customers understand and avoid these problems, making sure they have a good return policy, making sure the credit card is uh, got the right description on it for the business name, making sure that the uh, receipts have good contact information, give that customer a path to resolve their issues so that their first step is not a chargeback. Make sure that they have other steps prior to that before they get to that level. Make chargeback the last resort. 